Good evening everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes. It's Tuesday at 6.30 and I'm here with another demonstration this evening and tonight's cake is called Winter Wonderland. Now that sounds lovely and wonderful doesn't it and I'm totally winging it. <laughs> which I know is usual for most things but no I am really winging it tonight so I've got this in my head as usual and let's hope that it all turns out okay I'm sure it will be absolutely fine but thank you very much for joining me on Tuesday evenings um, I'm not with Kelly this evening Kelly is around Kelly's at home she is doing the links from there because Kelly has had an allergic reaction today so she is at home in bed but she is online and she will be doing some links and comments for you so we've got Kelly working remotely this evening so she is here it's just that she's not in the same room as me <laughs> Uh, but she is definitely here. So um, we're going to be doing a winter wonderland cake tonight. So we're going to be using some of the wonder dusts. We're also going to be using um, a patchwork cutter. So I've been using lots of patchwork cutters in the demonstration recently. Tiny little bit of painting, not too much painting tonight, just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to be doing some royal icing. So we're going to be doing some piping as well. Um, lots of different effects. But the idea is we're going to kind of go for a winter wonderland. So let's hope that um, that looks very flat. Flash. Um, so yeah, Kelly is here but working remotely this evening. She's in bed, not very well. So, <laughs> so if you do see Kelly coming up on the screen, you'll know she is she is in the vicinity. She's just not next to me. That's all I'm afraid. So we're going to get started in a minute. I believe my mother is watching this evening as well. I'm going to keep an eye out for her name. <laughs> she's feeling sorry for me no it's fine so we're going to crack on shortly we've got quite a big cake to do tonight so it's quite tall um i'm trying to go for sort of a um, a nice effect with it with the wonder dusts now i was going to look for my tape measure there it is i put it in one of my usually um, <laughs> usual places here we go right so this is our cake for this evening i've already covered it because i've got a lot to do so this cake is actually quite big it's it was a six inch cake but it's grown a bit with ganache so it's a six by six which is the equivalent of four layers of cake stacked on top of each other i've already ganached it and i've covered it with white sugar paste so that's where we are so far at the moment and then we're going to move on from there so in terms of covering cakes live i've done so many cakes covered live there's masses of massive of information if you want to find out and see how that's done you can always nip over to my youtube channel and have a look on there i've covered hundreds of cakes so i didn't do that this evening because i thought we would cut that corner and we would uh, move on to the fun part which is the decorating part so if you do want to have a look at that then just pop over there to the youtube channel and have a look um i forgot to say actually i sort of launched into the demo and forgot to mention that for um for those of you that um, wanted to watch a beginner's cocoa butter cake demonstration I did do one on Saturday on my Facebook page um, if you do want to go back and watch it it is actually still available so I'm going to just put my Facebook page up now um, because you've probably cottoned on already we don't um, demonstrate straight out sugar and crumbs kitchen we are working in Buckinghamshire so we're about four hours away from sugar and crumbs so I do my demos from my own unit um, but if you would like to find out more about beginner's cocoa butter painting go to the Facebook page and you'll find there's a demonstration that I did on Saturday that talks you all the way through it so if it's something you're thinking gosh I'd really like to know a bit more about that then there is an hour-long demonstration on there I painted a bauble actually I don't know if I've still got it yes I have right and I also did a Christmas paint always do a Christmas paint now now we're in season for Christmas there we go so that's what I painted on Saturday as well so it kind of incorporates um, some patchwork cutters and also this was all done freehand without any cutters at all so if you fancy following this particular tutorial or you want to have a look at it go on the Facebook page after the live and then you can have a little look and find out how to do it it's nice and straightforward it's really really easy to do and as I say hopefully it will inspire a few of you to pick up some paint brushes <laughs> that's always the game once you put a paintbrush in your hand that's it everybody you are hooked the christmas display is growing please note that the some of the christmas cakes are now out behind me the fox the angel the snowman the candles the teddy the snow globe the board uh, the bird in the bauble and the royal icing cake so all the christmas stuff is starting to appear now um, don't forget if you want to go and have a look at the actual courses you need to go to a different website for me it's tracymancakeschool.co.uk and some of these are on offer at the moment the fox is on offer and 
and the big group of painting classes is also on offer that's seven lessons for 99 pounds it's an absolute steal um, so do go and have a look um, because you'll love it once you get into it you won't be able to stop i can tell you very addictive right let's go back to what we're doing tonight so we're going to do a winter wonderland <laughs> Here we go. So we've got our cake to start with. Now I have contemplated whether or not to make all the mess first because we're going to actually do, um, we're going to cover this cake in Wonder Dust. And last time I did that, it went absolutely everywhere. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we should do that bit first and get that done before I make any, any more <laughs> mess. Because once I start cutting all the bits out to go on the cake, I think I'd rather be happier that that is actually complete rather than me worrying about it. So let's go and have a look at this first. So there's our cake. So the idea is we're going to put, what did I do with that paintbrush on? I am prepared. We're going to put some wonder dust on here. Now I'm trying very hard to get one colour to fade into the other, but I've not actually achieved it yet. I'm still really struggling to kind of get a blend going on that I'm happy with. Not that I'm fussy because I am very, very fussy. Um, so we're going to just give it a little go and see how we get on. I'm just going to put a little bit of kitchen roll down here just so I don't end up wearing this completely. It will go absolutely everywhere, but that's normal. So in order to do this part of the um, cake, you're going to need Trex. Trex looks like this. There's Trex. You can buy Trex from Waitrose and I'm just going to put the lock on there so it doesn't keep going in and out. Waitrose and Sainsbury's and all sorts of Tesco, big Tesco's, all sorts of things like that. And all I'm going to do, I've actually started this already on one side, is just take hold of some of this Trex and I'm just going to coat it onto my sugar paste. Now you don't want to put too much on. If you put too much on it can cause you more problems but you do actually want to make sure it's all covered because if it's not all covered then the dust has got nowhere to stick so it's a bit of a kind of it's one of these ones that you're going to have to be sort of a bit thorough with so you need to make sure you've covered it all but not too much because if you put too much on i can tell you it is a pain <laughs> it's an absolute pain so you want to just have the thinnest layer of this that you can get away with. And what this does is this sticks the Wonder Dust to the cake and it gives it a very kind of intense look. So rather than being a sort of a light shaded version of this um, Wonder Dust, it actually glues it to the cake. Now it's not going to dry because remember it's a grease, so it will never dry. Um, but it still looks very nice. And I've done all my wedding cakes like this. <laughs> I am half reading these comments and half looking at this Trex at the moment. I've got to concentrate on what I'm doing. So we're going to cover the whole cake. So I've already done some of it before I came on tonight. I'll get a little bit done in advance, but I'm still going to go around and check it. It's usually down the bottom here where it starts to run into difficulties with Trex. Let's go around there to make sure I don't miss any bits. I've already done the back side. So it should be... Okay, I'm going to do the board as well. I just decided in the end, actually, if you want to do this and then put it on a white board, you've got to do it all separately because the Wonder Dust just goes absolutely everywhere. Um, and that's what you need to do. So we're going to just go round on the board first. Do that as well. We're just going to go for the whole thing. We're going to pick, now last week I did Frozen Blue. This week I'm going to do Violet Mist. I wanted to do shimmer blue, but I cannot find shimmer blue anywhere. I have looked everywhere for it. I don't know what I've done with it, but it has vanished. Yes, this is fresh fondant. I only iced this cake about an hour ago. So um, it doesn't matter whether it is or isn't, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference to how this works. Right, let's do the top as well. Let's get that bit done. Winter wonderland, eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to be doing? <laughs> oh yeah, you've always, you've always got to cover your board, um, cover your boards, and cover your and put ribbon on. Then you've got a proper finished cake. Definitely, definitely. Right. Just make sure I've not put too much Trex on that part. I know this seems like she's going round and round and round, but it's really important because if I've got any gaps, then the um, the wonder dust isn't going to stick to it, and then I will be cursing it. I can go back and add more if I want to, but I really don't want to do that if I can help it. There we go. Right, okay, that 
I think is okay. We'll all find out shortly. Now, we are going to use, you're gonna need a nice fluffy brush to do this. I'm gonna actually put this straight onto my, oh, somebody's, I tell you, I need to, I've got all the dust, but can I find the one I need for this evening? Nope. I cannot find shimmer blue, so we're going to do violet mist instead. I think this will be fine. Actually, sometimes a lot of it's to do with it getting to show up on the cameras as well. So I think this one will be fine. So this is Violet Mist, which is like a sort of a lilac-y purple colour, I guess. Let's tip that out onto there. I'm going to need more of that anyway. I'm going through this stuff like wildfire at the moment. If you haven't discovered Wonder Dusts already, well, <laughs> they're lovely. They're just absolutely lovely. They really are really lovely now the other one i've got in front of me is magical moon dust so this is magical moon dust now the idea with that was i was going to try and magically moon dust the top and then we were going to have the other color coming down the side but i could not get the two to blend how i wanted them to blend earlier today so what i'm going to do is leave that one for the moment and we'll just concentrate on getting this darker color on and then we'll go from there so all you're going to do is just take your brush and just kind of tap it into the wonder dust which is where it goes absolutely everywhere we'll start at the bottom and then we'll just very carefully start to brush this onto the cake now i will make absolutely tons of mess which is quite reassuring because if you're doing this at home and you think well how has she done this and not made any mess well i'm going to make some mess for sure so we're going to very carefully start moving this onto the cake it does take a while to get on but once it's on and you start sort of buffing up the size it looks really nice really quickly yes yeah, so i'm actually quite glad i started with the messy bit because we so know that i'm going to have to clear this up afterwards otherwise it's going to be everywhere it's only just recovered from the blue from last week <laughs> right so this is uh, what did i say it was called violet mist this one Okay, we're just going to very carefully work our way around. So it's not going to look great to start with. It's going to look a bit patchy. Well, that's okay. We're just trying to get one layer down to start with. Just start our procedure off. I did think, actually, after last week's one. So we did the Candy House last week. So if anyone missed last week's one, again, it's available on the YouTube channel. Um, or you can go back and watch it on Sugar and Crumbs. I did that one with the really nice, um, oh, what's that called? Frozen something. Frozen blue. Is that right? Frozen blue, yeah, there we go. So I did frozen blue last week. Quite honestly, I would have done frozen blue again if I could have got away with it, but I'm running out. So <laughs> I need to stock up my supplies. Um, frozen blue is a lovely colour. It's really bright, really, really bright. So this only works on fondant. I'm just reading that comment there from Heather. Um, yeah, this doesn't work on buttercream. You see, I've missed a bit there, look. Um, it doesn't work on buttercream. You would have a bit of a nightmare on your hands if you were doing with buttercream. It'd be absolutely everywhere. We don't want that. So this only works on sugar paste. I know people call it fondant. That's because um, probably most people have been watching Cake Boss because that's what they call it. Um, so sugar paste. Fondant in this country is actually those French fancies. You know, the Mr. Kipling's French fancies. They're fondant fancies. It's like a pouring icing. There we go it's going on well so when I take my picture at the end of this then I think you'll get the full effect in terms of like the color so normally when I finish my dems I normally put them the picture onto the cake community page so um, you can have a look on there and then I put the recording onto YouTube afterwards so if you have any sort of Facebook outages or anything funny going on during this um, then you'll be able to catch up. Um, just a note about the candy house. If anybody's ordered the candy house from me, we are just waiting for the stock to arrive. It's due in tomorrow or Thursday. It comes from America, oh joy. Um, so I'm just waiting for that to come in. So if anybody's ordered that, they won't have had their parcels yet because we are holding them to wait for this stuff to arrive. So as soon as it's in, we'll send them out just in case anybody thinks what she doing. They were very popular and it is a really nice one. Unfortunately, I don't have the cake here anymore. I say, unfortunately, I gave it away. So it went off to, where did I send it in the end? Um, it's gone to one of the NHS's, but I've forgotten which one because I've sent one out today as well. Christmas, uh, The Christmas tree one I did last week, that's gone to the neonatal ward at John Radcliffe today. But I can't remember where the other one went. <laughs> if it had happened an hour ago, I would remember. <laughs> 
dear. Right, so there we go. We're heading round now. Actually, I'm making marginally less mess than last week because last week it was going absolutely everywhere. It probably is. It's one of these things that you go to clear it all up and you realise you've chucked it everywhere. But that's looking good. Sometimes you get a better view of it than me, to be honest, because I sit here under all these lights and I, I can't really see what's happening, which is why it looks better. You get a better view than me, I think. So yeah, I've been trying to merge colours together so you kind of get one colour and then another colour coming up but I haven't quite got it right yet so I need some more practice. I'm sure by Christmas I will have sorted it out but I've not quite sorted it to, to my standards. So in other words, I don't want to go live with it yet until I've got it sorted. So once I've got it sorted, we'll give it a go. This is just kind of like a makeup brush, literally. So, you know, this great big thick brush I've got here doesn't need to be anything special. Um, a makeup brush, like a big blusher brush is really good. Obviously, it's going to get really messy. So at the end, you're going to need to wash it all out and then just let it dry. And then you can use it again for the next colour. So they always look a bit sad when you've washed them and you think this is never going to dry. But they do. They will dry. Just have to bear with it. Right, we're nearly back at the beginning. Now I've got a little gap around the bottom, you can see there. I'm not worried about that because that's um, going to get covered later on. So I'm not going to faff about getting colour in there. I'm just going to use the colour I've spread absolutely everywhere. Now we've got a little bit more to do on top. Now I find with the Wonder Dust with a size of cake like this, you're probably going to need at least half a pot. I don't think... You'll need more than that. I think it just depends how big your cake is. But these six by six cakes takes up about half a pot. So just to give you an idea of kind of how far these go. So that's, um, if you think about it, you're going to get two cakes per pot, I'd say, if you're going to cover them like this anyway. Let's go across the top like so. And then we can leave that. I've got a little bit on there. I just did actually... A, I nearly changed my mind and did a different demo um, tonight and then I backtracked to what I was going to do initially. So I've just slightly dented the top with next week's topper. Well, hey, <laughs> I can't possibly be this organised. It's never, it never happens. But yeah, I've had two demos to choose from tonight and I was, I'm in an R in and I'm in an R and what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I decided to do this one at the final moment. So there you go. So next week's demo is planned already. So we're going to be doing Christmas um, Gingerbread House Village or something along those lines next week anyway. So we're going to be painting and all sorts next week. Another hat, another cake. Right, so now you see as we go round again, we can start sort of, you'll see it gets quite patchy, but when you go round the second time, your the dust then now will pick up everything that's left you can see it's getting a really nice finish on it and then you've got full coverage it's really good for full coverage okay there's no other way of doing this other than with these treks i find the treks is the best way to do it but put too much on at your peril because then what happens is it starts to like an elephant skin it starts to gather pace when you're putting the um and they wander dust on it starts to sort of build up in places so it's the minimal amount you can get away with that's what you're looking for look at that that's coming on really well isn't it what's joe's question can the size of the cape the fox fits on what my um my fox lesson which is behind me i think it's on an eight inch square cake but you can size it up and down you don't have to do it on an eight you can do it on any size you like so uh, it's entirely up to you I've got the fox out because he's not really listed as a Christmas cake painting class. But you know what? He's got he's surrounded by snow and oh, I don't know. I think we just tend to associate foxes a little bit Christmas, don't we? So I thought, right, let's get him out and then you can have a look at the fox cake. I'll pop him under the cameras later so you can have a little look for those that are interested in having a go at something a bit more realistic in terms of project. Look at that. That's looking great, isn't it? Oh, lovely. Just go around with the brush now. See, once it gets going, yes, I'm in a total mess, but it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're not worried. I've just read somebody's got a very nice makeup system. I would like to know what that is. <laughs> the cleaning brushes, yes, please. 
something like this. So this is Violet Mist that we're using this evening, Wonder Dust. I don't know what Carol's stock levels are like with this, but I'm sure that she's probably got loads. Let's hope anyway. I get sent these things, you see, and then I just do it. <laughs> Forget to check if there's any stock. <laughs> I have to put it in a wish list basket or something, don't you? Right, I think we're there, near enough. Just put a tiny bit more on as a little patch that keeps appearing. Just there. So yeah, when you get to the end of it, it's almost like sort of buffing it up, really. It's quite a nice sort of... When you first start this, you look at it and you think, oh my God, this is never going to work. This is just a disaster. But do you know what? If you go around, I'd say minimum three times, you get a really nice effect really, really quickly. You just have to kind of go with it. Go, go, go. Has Maureen put up a picture? She put up a picture of her fox because I think she's been doing the fox. I haven't seen it, Maureen, so I don't get pictures on this feed, but I'll have a look if you've done it because I know you were going to do it. Right, I think that's enough mess for one evening. Let's get rid of this. We're going to have a little clear up. So what I'm going to do is I will start to clear up. And while I'm doing that, I will put the fox under the camera and you can have a little look at that rather than me clearing up the mess everywhere. Let's just clear this little bit up here so it's not completely covered in there. So we we'll can have a look at the fox painting project while I just move things around. Right, let's put that down there and you can have a look under the camera. There he is. So he's not listed as a Christmas project, but he is a Christmas project at the moment. So he's down as Christmas, he's down as a fox paint. He's on offer at the moment. So if anybody wants to have a go at this project, just remember as well, you need to go to a different website. I'm sure Kelly will put the link up for you. I'm going to actually just remove this cake off the turntable. You can all look at my fox cake while I'm clearing up my mess. <laughs> it's a lot more interesting than the mess I'm creating. A second turntable on here to speed things up. Wonderful. Right, so he's done with lots of kind of like matte colours. So the colours for this project were sunset orange, um, brown, black, white, um, primrose, I think was in there somewhere. Biscuit. Biscuit's another colour I use quite a lot of. That's a really nice colour as well. There we go, let's take that down. The fox is lovely. Do have a go at it. I know it looks really hard, but I can assure you it's not. It's all just done step by step. There's a nice little template involved. It's a really, really nice project to do. Right, we've cleared up now. Well, I say I've cleared up every time I'm still moving the cloth round and finding huge amounts of <laughs> violet mist everywhere. Right, let's put the cake back on there. Okay, there we go. I'll go back to that now. I've had a good look at the fox. Let's put him over there. I'm sure you're going to see a few cake painting examples appear over the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for them. Right, there we go. Right, the only person who's got purple mist on them now is me. Let's get rid of that. Otherwise, absolutely everything I touch is going to have violet mist on it. We don't want that. Okay. I can assure you that you will be able to do this fox, I promise you. Um, one of the very, when I first started cake painting, I was, let's go back to, apart from my lovely mother who is watching, I'm watching for a name to come up. Mum, you need to say hello. Um, my mum is an animal portrait artist and she is fantastic. She is absolutely amazing. And some of the first things I ever drew were cats and dogs and we did a wildlife course. I did those two courses side by side. And those were the first courses I ever sold at Cake International. So I didn't have a beginner's course. I didn't have any base courses to start with. We were straight in on these harder animals and everybody could do them. And I used to teach them in class as well. So you could come in and do the fox with me rather than actually um, 
worry about doing beginners some people were going straight to that and sometimes actually with cake painting as well I always say to people paint what you like rather than what you you know if you don't like a project you're probably not going to get on with it very well so whenever you choose a project to paint like from the cake school always have a look and go I love that picture and then you'll do a good job because if you don't really like the picture you're not going to sort of buy into it so always do something that you're definitely going to buy into well that's what I tell everybody anyway <laughs> Right, okay, let's make a few bits, shall we? Let's move the treks out of the way because we don't need that anymore. And let's get some of the pieces we need together tonight. So, what did I do with that board? Oh, there it is. So we're gonna be using patchwork cutters tonight. And we're going to be using a sweet stamp as well. So we've got a few bits. We're gonna do some piping. We're gonna make some flowers. We're going to do all sorts. Flowers in a winter wonderland, I know. It's all happening, it's all going on. Okay, let's go down and have a look at the board. Right, so we're going to make some things now. Now the first thing we're going to be looking at is patchwork cutters. Uh, the, here it is. So I'm going to use this one tonight which is called the Stag and Snowflake set, okay? Now I'm going to say, <laughs> I've already muddled this up because I've put the Christmas midi set in here so I can't show you what that is including but basically there we go, we've got a big stag, that's the big stag, we've got a little deer there and a little deer sat down, deer 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 as my dad would say, So that, uh, oh there's my mother, she's just appeared, Susan Brown, there she is, <laughs> yes I did do that mother. <laughs> Right, and we're going to be using this sweet stamp here, Let It Snow. So we're going to paint that and have that as a centerpiece as well. Also within the um, set, here we go, we have snowflakes. Now I'm going to show you how to deal with these because a lot of the problems with patchwork cutters is that people don't roll out the paste correctly or they roll out the wrong type of paste so that when they actually come to do this they can't deal with these because the detail on the here is just second to none. However, um, it, it can be a bit of a pain if you don't understand how to use it properly. So some I've cut out in advance already um, and some I'm just putting together now so I'll be able to show you exactly what it is that that we're going to be doing I don't want to hide anything from you now I've already cut this chap out he's drying over there so we're going to use I'm going to use Saraceno modeling paste rather than sugar paste because when you come to cut out patchwork cutters you do need a really tough paste um, if you're going to be using um, sugar paste you will get the detail won't come out and in fact it will just be a nightmare for you so please don't use sugar paste please use modeling paste modeling paste being saraceno in this case what i'm going to be using here let's put that out of the way so marion i believe is on sugar and crumbs on thursday this week you lucky devils i shall be watching as well she had marion is just lovely so you're in for a treat this week on thursday so you get to see marion again so i'm just going to roll this out now so when you roll out, what was that I just dropped? I don't know what that was. When you roll out this paste in order to be able to cut these out, you've got to be going really, really thin. And that's why this gum paste is the stuff to be using. Where's my, that's what I want. I'm just going to put some icing sugar down. Just a little bit, so it's moving. Now I'm going to press down a bit further. And what I used to say to my students is you need to be able to see the tablecloth. And they were thinking, well, what's she talking about? Um, <laughs> and you should be able to see through this, or certainly almost see through it. So you could have hold it up against your, your tablecloth. But you want this super thin. You can see how little I had and how much it's sort of stretching to. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to get it right straight away. Potentially, I could end up rolling it out a bit more. But I've done enough of these over the years to kind of roughly know how thin it used to be. Somebody's used pastelage with it. Okay, good. So, there we go. Got it fairly thin. 
or thin enough, I think. So we'll put a bit of icing sugar down there. That just stops it from sticking to the board. We need it to move. All right, it's quite important it's moving. So we'll cut this these two deer out because I haven't done those yet. So we'll pop that down on there. So all you're going to do is press down and then you're going to, I haven't actually cut these out yet for the first time. So here we go, live. We're going to just go round and round and then take hold of the paste and just pull it out. Now, what I tend to do then is turn it over while it's still in the patchwork cutter and just run your finger around it to kind of get, make sure it's cut properly. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it back again. I'm just gonna push my finger into the patchwork cutter there. And then I'm gonna very carefully, she says, hopefully, there we go, bingo, get the deer out like that. Okay, that came out okay, perfect. But if I tried to do that with sugar paste, it would be a total nightmare. So please don't try and do it with sugar paste. I've already cut the big deer out because I needed him to dry a bit because otherwise what tends to happen when you come to put him on the cake is antlers fall about all over the place and I can't be doing with that on a live. So I've done him in advance. This is the baby one that sat down. Now I'm cutting these out with white tonight because I'm going to do an all white decoration against the violet. So it's think Harry Potter, everybody. Think sort of like a white stag, sort of Patronus type thing. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do here. So if anybody's thinking, why is she doing this in white? I'm doing it because I'm doing all the decorations in white tonight for that reason. If you can't get this out, because that is quite a small gap, just use a little tool and therefore there is our two dears. Lovely. Right, now I'm going to do the snowflake. What I really want is either, I'm going to just grab a cocktail stick because my scriber is not in sight. Oh no, I've grabbed an acupuncture needle, which isn't going to be strong enough to get these out. So for the snowflakes, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this a little bit thinner still because they're much, e they're much easier to get out the snowflakes are highly detailed you can see just about see my board there can you see how thin it's getting you really want to get this down thin to be able to get these out like so lovely so let's give one a go and see how we get on so again pop these down round and round and round now, you're going to see it like that. You're not going to be able to get that out. OK, so what you'll then need to do is get hold of a scriber or a cocktail stick. I've grabbed a cocktail stick in this case. Just help it out a little bit like so. And then you can just put it down like that. So once they are easy enough to come out, they just need some small amount of assistance. Sometimes they just fall out, but... I always find I just need to encourage them a little bit and actually once you kind of start one side it comes out pretty quickly and easily just press it down now you can make these in advance so you could leave these to dry I've already made a few of these up to help me get through the demo so we'll do that one and then we'll do the other three so you can have a look at those so these are the snowflakes that are in the stag and the snowflake set there we go that down like so there we go right this one is can you see that on there probably not let me do it and then you'll be able to see it i like saraceno paste i'm going to just take these little bits out here can you see like so it's very detailed this one so potentially more chance for it to get stuck in there in the um, cutter let's have a little go so if you haven't got this thin enough you're never going to get this out you will have to have another go and you may have to make sure you're using the right paste the paste is the key to this there we go so it's perfectly possible to get it out as long as you've got the right paste <laughs> it's as simple as that these are tiny little decorations on this cake. You're not eating great big chunks of modelling paste. I think if we were covering the entire cake with modelling paste, that would be a problem. We are not. We are making a few decorations. And so in terms of the taste, you're not going to have too much problem with this because look, they are tiny, tiny little things. Right, that's those two. Let's have a look at the other two. So that one is a smaller version of that one. So I won't need to cut out loads because I've already done quite a few in advance. So this is the mini version of this one. 
She's a clever old stick is Marion in patchwork. There we go, let's cut a couple of those. Oh, thank you. I'm just reading Anne's comments. I did go to Cake International on Friday and I did actually meet quite a few people at Cake International on Friday. So it was very nice to see some of you up there. I had a very nice day. I hope to have a stand next year. That would be nice. Go back to normal. Right, now this one I've clearly used earlier today, so I'm just going to take the bits of icing out that got stuck in the cutter. Right, this is the most tricky one to use. No, it's not. I've got the wrong one. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's this one. This one is tiny and it's got a few more indents in it, this one. Can you see? It is really pretty, but there's more chance, I guess, of it getting stuck. So I'm just going to... There we go. And just leave it like that. So we'll do a few of those. Look at the collection we've got going on here. And like that. Come on. So what I'm aiming for tonight with tonight's cake, and I actually probably need to take a little video of it, you know, is I'm going to do a cake that goes all the way around the edge. So the decoration isn't just in one place. It's going to be all the way round. And we're just basically setting up like a winter wonderland scene so this cake you'll be able to see it from all angles i've actually got my revolving turntable out this evening um i've got an electric one it takes a minute for it to spin it's quite good for wedding cakes when you do one of those reveal cakes you know what i mean right so i've already cut out a load of um extra snowflakes so i'm going to stop there and not continue with any any further now, I could, if I wanted to, dust these up with some, what have I got here? Hold on. What's this one? Pearl Snow. Is it white? Let me have a look. Oh, that's white. We could dust those, couldn't we? Let's do that in a second. But before we do that, I'm going to just um, make my Let It Snow plaque with my sweet stamp. So I'm probably going to do that with modelling paste as well. Actually, no, that's a little bit of sugar paste there. That'll do. We'll have a mixture, shall we? There we go. Oh, get a stand, please. I, I was going to have a stand this year and then a few things went wrong and I decided at the last minute not to have a stand, but I fully intend to have a stand next year. So um, I hope to be back at Cake International with a stand next year. That would be nice. So with this plaque bit that I'm making, I'm just going to roll out... Um, I'm going to make it too thin, that'll do, like so, I want it not to be too thin, it's not got to be patchwork cutter thin. So this is a sweet stamp, it's got the word let it snow written on it, and then I'm just going to, just, I don't know how I'm not saying let it go. <laughs> I'm just going to press this down and then this will emboss. Let's have a look, yeah, happy with that, that's fine, I'm going to make sure it's moving. I don't want it to be too deep, I want to be able to see it. But I don't want it to be too deep. Now I've got a little cutter here. Just pop that over the top. Like so. And we'll just cut that out. Press that down. Give it a little twist. There we go. Let it snow. And then what we'll do is we're going to paint that. So bring in the cocoa butter. Here it is. <laughs> now I've, for those of you that are cocoa butter painting people you'll know what I'm doing for those that are not this is a chrome food warmer and this is a tea light that's lit it's a very new tea light as you can see um, that is lit under there that's going to heat up my metal paint palette and in turn that's going to melt my cocoa butter that's the cocoa butter butter that I had earlier on today so you can see when it sets it just goes rock hard and then when I remelt it this will turn to liquid in a minute and then we'll be able to paint with it so the color I picked to paint this lettering is wonder dust silver which is really, really nice. Um, so that's um, Wonder Dust Silver colour. That's the choice tonight. Um, to paint the lettering that's on here, I just need to make sure this is moving. Whenever you go and cut out a shape, you want it to remain the shape <laughs> that you started with. Make sure there's some icing sugar under there. So you can see this starting to melt under the camera. I'm just going to put these patchwork cutter bits away because I have this amazing habit of going back to use patchwork cutters and losing one crucial bit and it really annoys me. So I'm trying to keep everything in one bag today. That's why I've mixed up the midi set with the stags, but that's okay. 
Right, there we go. Um, yeah, Ke <laughs> it won't be Kelly singing Let It Go, it'll be her sister. <laughs> it'll be Charlotte. Right, let's move that over there. I'm just tidying up while I'm waiting for this to melt. You see, it's almost melted. Now, I've got this brush here, which is a zero zero. You're going to need a very, very small brush in order to be able to do this um, because this lettering here is quite tight. So that's a zero zero brush or at worst case, a zero. OK, so we're just going to take our brush, dip it in there, grab some silver. I say this is Wonder Dust Silver. A very nice colour. I have to be honest with you, I thought it was a bit dark to start with, but when I painted with it, I was quite pleased with it, actually. So um, it it lightens as you add liquid to it. So, yeah, it's quite a good one, this one. So we're just going to take hold of the brush. I'm on the right camera. Yes, I am. Sometimes I'm busy chattering away and I don't realise I haven't changed my cameras. So we're just going to paint this. Now the 00 brush fits quite nicely into the dents or cavity of this particular um, stamp, sweet stamp. Let it snow. There's a song, isn't it, for that? I'm not going to sing it though. I'll be chucked off Facebook if I start singing. <laughs> So just follow this round. I know a few people are a bit nervous about doing this. If you don't want to do this, you can always pipe it. Um, you can just follow the line. So get your piping bags out and just follow the lines. That's nice and easy to do. Or just leave it as it is. You know, you don't have to um, embellish it. You can just leave as is. But I think this stands out a little bit better if it's painted and not. That's what I think anyway on this. Now I have got it upside down, you're looking at it the same way as me, so just bear that in mind. We've both got the same view, so let, it's got different, um, a different type of font for the it bit. In the middle there. Another, another reason why I move things around is because this is an indent, sometimes you can't quite get your brush in at all angles. So if you turn it, then you can make sure you've actually got absolutely everything in. And we'll go around there. It gets a bit wider there, but that's okay. And just follow it round. You can do these in advance. These are nice. I tell you what, these are nice for cupcakes. They make nice cupcake toppers if you're doing like a treat box or something, or even a, a top of a cookie would look nice. Nothing too scary, is it? Let it snow. Let it snow as long as it's not on Christmas Day. That's what I don't want. It can snow any other time. <laughs> Otherwise, my mum will be trapped in Hamden, won't you, mum? <laughs> you're cooking your own dinner. So round we go. That's coming out all right, isn't it? That looks okay on screen. Excited to see the final cake. So am I. <laughs> oh dear. We never get a chance to practice anything. So I do sort of, I call them like, um, I'll do like a panel sometimes in the afternoon where I'll literally just roll out a block of paste and we'll try and lay it out and see if it looks okay just on a little panel. So we never get a chance to actually do the whole cake until it's alive. So your anticipation is probably the same level as mine at the moment. Is it going to work? That kind of thing. <laughs> right, that's a nice exclamation mark here. Go. That looks all right, then that's fairly straightforward. And then now the snowflake. Actually, what before I get too carried away with that, I'm just going to go back and turn this around, make sure I've got all of the bits here. I think I've said this before in the past, you get a better view than me because the lights are shining on what I'm doing. So sometimes I can't quite see it. And then I look up at the camera and realise what I've missed. 
So let's just do the bottom of those just to make sure it stands out properly. Now there was a snowflake on here. It's probably a job to see it. And I'm just going to take hold of my paintbrush and I'm just going to go straight across like that in a straight line. We'll do it in silver. I'm not going to do it in any other colour. And then there's some little bits jutting off it there and there like so. Again, I'll hold this up at the end and you'll realise what I've done. Let's turn that round and then we go the other way. So straight through the centre. And then either side. And then one more. So it's actually three lines through. I didn't actually count this afternoon when I was doing it. Straight through again. And again, those little bits on the side there. See, then that looks quite nice and sparkly, doesn't it, I think? I will pick that up. And then you can see that there. I think that looks very pretty, doesn't it? Not too difficult to do. Um, and that is using uh, Wonder Dust Silver, which I think, as I said to you before, looks very dark when you get it. But actually, when you paint it up, I think that works really quite well. So that's a very small brush as well. Please don't struggle with large brushes because it's just going to be awful for you. Um, please make sure you have nice big brushes to do these things or little brushes rather I'm thinking I need a big brush now um yeah nice small brushes to do this otherwise it really is going to be just like torture for you and I don't want you to to struggle with this right now what I'm going to do I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't want that to end up getting covered in any more dust I'm going to just move my two um dear 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 I'll pop them on there so we'll pop these onto my kitchen roll and then the ones I made earlier so I've got a few here right that's those on you probably can't see them that well but hey ho you'll be able to see them better once we get them on the cake so let's bring the rest of them on that I made a little while ago they're still soft Saraceno toughens up it doesn't um, set like a brick really until quite a, a way down it's heat reactive as well so if you've got warm hands then it will sort of remain soft there so I've done a few haven't I? I've been busy there we go so let's get these all onto him what we're going to do then is we're just going to run the pearl luster over the top of them oh all the magical moon dust oh okay that's a good choice here Magical moon dust. Oh, let's have a look at this one. This is iridescent, this, which is quite interesting. But I think what we'll do is we'll go with the pearl snow. I've got one of the original ones here. Like I've got temporary label and everything. Right, let's get a brush. And then we'll just go over these. Again, they probably won't show up very much on the camera. It'll be better when we get them onto the cake and then you'll be able to see them a bit better. So let's give them a bit. I want these to be sort of more of a standout feature than the piping. So we'll pearlise these. And then hopefully they will stand out. I think we've got a bit of bling going on. The silver balls are coming out tonight, everybody. I know, the return of the silver balls. It's like an episode, isn't it? <laughs> I've had them out for ages. So the silver balls are making an appearance tonight. Could not, could I? Could not put the silver balls on this cake. Ooh, that one's decided to leap about. Come back, come back. And then that one there. Nearly there. It don't take long to do. Just there we go. I think that's all of them. I'm not sure what happened to that one. I think I might squash that one. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. It's a rogue one there. I think it ended up getting squashed. There we go. Right, all done. That's those sorted. And let's move that out of the way. So the three colours that I've used tonight are, just to recap, um, Pearl Snow, Wonder Dust Silver, and the other one which was cool, here it is, uh, violet mist so those are the three colors that i've used tonight okay just in case you're wondering magical moon dust is hovering i've, I've 
I say I did have a go with this earlier today. It's iridescent. It's very nice actually, but I need to think about some of these iridescent ones, what to do with them. So I'm not going to keep the stags white. I'm not going to muck about with those. I'm now going to just blow this candle out because otherwise I will forget. Now let's put it there. So it's the cocoa butter done. Let's get this out of the way. Right, let's get on to the other camera and we can start assembling the cake. Oh, what fun. Right, okay, let's press that button there. Right, I'm just gonna make sure I'm not gonna kick that camera because I'm very close to it. Um, I've got some royal icing in a bag. I've got piping nozzle number two. My royal icers will be thrilled that I'm using piping nozzle number one. We are on number two relief. Right, so I have got, let me move that out of there and let's bring in the bits that I made earlier including some backup bits, you know, just in case it went wrong. So when we're going to start assembling the cake, we kind of need to put the bigger things in the biggest, in the sort of feature places, I guess. So we've got the large deer, we've got the two deer together, and we've got the let it snow. So we kind of got a point of three, I would say, sort of going around this cake here. So for our let it snow, so there's our let it snow there. I'm just going to turn that over and I'm just going to, let's see if we can pick that up on camera, Actually, it might help if I unblocked the piping nozzle before I started. Let's do that. I'm going to need a bit more royal icing than I've got in here. So royal icing you can make from Merry White. You can also use the whipping it up. The only thing I would say whipping it up is just make sure you add a little bit of white uh, colouring into it because it tends to dry yellow. So if you want a pure white sort of finish, then make sure you put in some um, white colouring. Just a little bit, just to make sure that doesn't happen. Right, so we are now putting a little bit of royal icing on the back of this. Let me make sure I've got it around the right way. I have. So we'll just pop that on there because it's not going to matter where the back and the front is because the whole cake is going to be three. You're going to look at it all the way around. So we'll pop that in there. Let's just make sure it actually is straight because that will really annoy me if it isn't. Okay, that's fine. Um, in true Tracy style, I'm going to just pipe little dots going around the outside edge of this so we just pipe just going round it will just finish it off it just stops it looking I don't know unfinished um, when you come to stick things onto cakes please don't use tons and tons of icing or sugar glue because what happens is it slides it's as simple as that you'll suddenly find you'll look at this and it will be sliding down the cake um, and you've just put too much on she says checking it's not sliding okay so I'm just piping a small let me turn that around a bit small little dots going around the edge of this here just to kind of hold it in place really but I missed one there which is really annoying there we go and keep going so just little dots I think you've probably got a better view than me at the moment. <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. So around we go. So this is piping nozzle number two. And it's just creating a little bit of a framework there. Can you see? No, the silver balls are coming though. You, you've got to brace yourself for the right moment for the silver balls. They're on their way, don't you worry. I have them in my eyesight tonight. And it's with all, I'm getting withdrawal symptoms from not using silver balls for a long time now, so it's time we add them back out again. Let's start at the top there. I'm leaning at a very strange angle for you to be able to see this. Let me just turn it a little bit, because otherwise I'm gonna completely ruin this cake. Occasionally, with royal icing, you're allowed to breathe, just in and out for a moment. <laughs> I was saying to my royal icers, don't forget to breathe. So I do teach royal icing online as well, so if you ever fancy having a go at that, there is a class for royal icing. And it's a very nice class too. There we go. Right. See how much nicer is that with just a little bit of piping around the outside edge. It just tidies it up a little bit. I'm just going to push that up there to meet the top there. 
Right, that's that bit on. Now we've got um, the large stag. So there's the large stag that we've got to go on. So don't forget what I said to you tonight. This is a white, um, I wanted to do white decorations on a coloured cake. So we're going for the sort of Harry Potter Patronus type look. So I'm going to just pipe, I'm gonna to have to do this off screen, I'm afraid. Um, hold on, let me just move that up a little bit. You might be able to see it. Oh no, there you go, you can see a bit now. So I'm just gonna pipe some royal icing on his legs, just to hold him in place a little bit more on that leg. I'm not going to put it on with water, I don't think, because I think it needs a bit of stick to it. So we're just going to put some oil icing on him. Now, when it comes to his antlers, I need to be careful because I don't want the royal icing sort of washing and then ending up being visible. So I may end up putting just some little dots to hold it in place. Let's put it on and see how we get on. I think that's probably the answer to that. So we'll have the stag kind of facing that way, I think. So let's, let's think about this for a minute. Maybe we will have a front and a back. We'll put you there anyway. That's what we're going to do with you. I'm going to make sure you're not completely at the bottom of the cake. Okay, there we go feet down it doesn't need to be right at the bottom because I'm going to cover that later on so I don't want him right down there I expect Harry Potter to come out of a bush now <laughs> right let's have a look what I don't like about that is I can see it's lifting the color a little bit there we go that's better let's have a look at that now okay there he is Right, the stag is on. Right, let's go back this way. And I think what we'll do, because I'm now sort of thinking maybe I will have this as a front and a back, is we'll put this, the little deer this side on the opposite side. So let's get a tiny one there. So don't put these down too low. Otherwise, you'll see why later on. So we'll put that one in about there, like that. And then we'll put Mother Deer a bit further up. And again, we'll just put a little bit of icing on there, on her legs. And then we'll pop you about there, I think. So lots of white, white on white. Actually, that is okay for a front, I think. I'm quite liking that idea now. There we go. Hmm. Yes, amazing when you start doing things, they don't turn out how you expect. And I like this a lot. Right, where's my silver balls? Come to me and let me move that out the way. Let's bring this in. Right, let's do some snowflakes now. I went to the garden centre last week and I saw these snowflake decorations and I thought, wow, they'd look nice in a cave, wouldn't they? That's just typical, isn't it? <laughs> I don't go in there thinking, gosh, I want these for my house. I start thinking they would look nice on a cake. So there we go. So we'll start, where should we start? Let's start here. So what we're going to do with our royal icing is we're going to take it and we're going to, hopefully you can see this, yes you can. So we're going to put down here some different size droplets. This is where you've got to be fairly straight. Like that. I'm going to take some of my snowflakes. Now let's take this one, for example. We'll put that one on there. I think we can see where this is going now, can't we? And we're going to make these different sizes, split them up a bit. I saw this in the garden centre and I thought, wow, that's lovely, but not but for a cake. <laughs> right, let's get the silver balls out, everybody. Brace yourself. Let's get a silver ball on there. Oh, let's get some serious bling going, shall we? Okay. How about that? Oh my goodness me, it's so nice. Right, okay, let's do some different lengths because that's going to make it look just nice. So we'll start with some Similar ones here, let's make that one a little bit bigger. We'll come down here. 
so I'm just going to pipe these on kind of quite randomly this is where it doesn't matter if you actually need um, these to be the same size you don't need to do that you can make them any size you like the only thing you have to do is get them relatively straight well, it's not too bad it's a little bit out but it's okay and they can get super small at the bottom there like that you see then what we'll do is we will get uh, we've got some more snowflakes here right okay so we'll pop that one there let's have a big one there this time there we go cool and then let's take some more silver balls let's put another one there and another one i don't know about there somewhere Will they break your teeth? Oh, I think they're not as bad as they used to be. I know back in the 1970s, if you had those silver balls, they really would break your teeth. There we go. Right, let's keep going. Let's do a few more. So you kind of just want to say, just make these different sizes, spread them out. And make them different lengths. I think they look nice if they're different lengths. And then obviously you can use the different snowflakes and have the snowflakes at different heights as well. So have them some quite high up, some quite low down. So that you're not kind of, uh, you know, you want to create something a little bit sort of different as it goes round like that. Can you see? All right, let's keep going. After a period of time, you'll get quite quick at putting these together, I'm sure of that. But what I am going to do is go the other way in a minute to make sure I've got enough snowflakes to do this. I mean, it looks like I have, but just to be super sure. You can even put two on the same one if you want. You don't have to just put a single one like I'm doing. If you want to put more on, you can. You can also do, um, do more silver balls if you want to. You could do this in... Um, there go. Let's go the other way for a minute just to make sure we don't miss this here. So we'll do a shorter one here. Perhaps something like that. Let's take another little snowflake. Where should we put you? Maybe there. And another silver ball, of course. That one up there. And then a bit further forward. make that really small and it kind of matches this round here as well so it kind of ties it all up together um it hopes uh it then ties it all together i think that is what we should be doing here well i seem to have went on a bit of a pattern and cut the same snowflakes out looking at this right let's put that one down here a bit lower and it'll be one under there and a complimentary silver ball for you there you go Now this is a nice, easy Christmas cake to do. It's very effective. All you need to be able to do is cut some shapes out. You need to be able to pipe a few little dots. So that's not too traumatic. And then you should be able to do this. Because I've done it step by step. So you should be able to copy this if you want to. Winter Wonderland. There we go. You'd have thought it, eh? Right. Like that. And then we'll put another little one in about there. I think one per line seems to be working quite well, but I think if you did an extra long one and you wanted to put in two, you could. It's just varying the sizes of them. I think that seems to be making the difference always mark your gaps out as well if you need to know how far apart these are but again I think it makes a difference if you vary them just because then if you do get them a bit skewed with it doesn't matter does it there we go so just white royal icing few snowflakes, silver balls, I was going to say Bob's your uncle and you're done. <laughs> oh 
we doing there you see I'm not sure if that one was straight but never mind right let's do a long one here now or maybe the next one will be a long one because we're getting close to the back of the the big deer now yeah we'll do the next one as the long one maybe so good old garden center for a bit of inspiration totally unexpected have a good look at the decorations that are around because you it's amazing where you get your inspiration from or well, i do anyway i get it off all sorts of things wrapping paper wallpaper christmas decorations clearly we go we do a nice long one there let me put this big one on here shall we all right let's put that on and we'll put that there let's have a look Mmm, love it. Happy days. Right, okay, let's keep going. I think actually in hindsight, um, I'm going to actually just do a load of these now because you can actually speed the process up by hobby piping two lines at the same time. Don't forget to vary these sizes. Okay, don't forget to vary those sizes. Oh, somebody's watching from where? South Africa, how lovely. Greetings from you. What time is it over in South Africa at the moment? Is it evening? Is it daytime? I'm not sure. So yeah, when you get into a routine with this, you can start speeding up the process by doing sort of two or three lines at the same time. You just don't want the royal icing to dry because if the royal icing dries, you're not going to be able to stick anything down. It's going to drive you crazy. So you do want to make sure that you've piped. I'm not going to say fairly quickly because that put people off. Just do two at a time. And vary the sizes. Let's go down a bit further with this one. Like that. Are we tempted to have a go at this? Is anyone? I mean, I'm trying to put a quite a modern twist on Christmas this year so far. We've had some very bright cakes. This is a bit more subtle. I think also as well, if anybody has that shimmer blue that seems to have vanished in my pot, that would look very nice with this as well. The violet works well, but I think shimmer blue would look very nice in this as well. Um, I did um and ah about the purple colour this afternoon, but I think that might be a tiny bit too dark. Um, and pistachio is another one I was looking at, but I, I'm quite happy with this one. I think this is the right colour for this project. I would have used the um, frozen blue again, but I think, you know, we used that last week. Let's use something else this week. I'll keep it going, keep a bit of variation going. And the snowflakes aren't completely stuck down. Um, they're just kind of balancing on the, the little dots, so you don't need to worry about them being flat. In fact, they would look better, I think, if they're a little bit 3D. Let's put a little blob there as well. I'll hold that one in. So if I turn this to the side, you'll be able to see. Uh, yeah, you can see they're not flat. I think they look better standing out, which is why you need that um, modelling paste to make sure it holds its shape. Please don't use this kit with um, sugar paste. Honestly, you will absolutely curse it. You will hate it and you'll never pick up patchwork cutters again. Patchwork cutters for embossing sugar paste, brilliant. Patchwork cutters for cutting out, you've got to be using modelling paste. Please don't use anything else. Sound like I'm putting isomalt warnings out now. <laughs> That's my isomalt warning voice, that is. <laughs> right, we're nearly there. Might as well go round now we're this far through the process. Let's put a few more silver balls on here because one can never have enough silver balls on a cake as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, this is, I don't like drip cakes to either Janie very much. I don't really do drip, drip cakes very often. I tend to do, whoops, tend to do this kind of thing, piping. I like piping, obviously. Tiny little bit, look, just got that little bit to go now because we're nearly there. So it doesn't take long to do either. It's very simple, just some dots, a few cut out snowflakes, a couple of silver balls. Can't go wrong, can you really? 
Now, the only messy part is that wonder dust getting that on but it's worth it isn't it because it's such a nice effect I think it's well worth it and as said to you before you need about half a pot to do I'm going to do three now you need about half a pot to do one six by six cake So one pot will do two cakes. Let's put that there. Well, I've got just enough snowflakes, you know. I couldn't have timed this any better, I don't think. I didn't even count them this afternoon. I literally just chopped a load out and thought, right, that'll do. We'll make do with that. Oh dear, I'm reading some of these comments. Is that calm teaching style? <laughs> I don't know about calm. I'm like a, a duck underwater, really. My legs are going. Right, how many have I got left? Four. Right, so we've got to do this in four. We can't do it in anything less than that. Do you know what? I think I've actually done it exactly. I mean, that is just almost irritating, isn't it? One, two. No, I'm going to have one spare. That's fine. Let's just get to the end. I know you can't see it at the moment because it's around the other side. Okay. Let's pop that on there. And this one on here. And there. Could actually even put the little snowflakes a bit higher than the cake if you wanted to, couldn't you? Give them a bit more of a 3D effect. Right, now I've done that bit, let's get those last silver balls on. I'm going to change nozzles if I can find one quickly. Let's have a look what I've got. My Royal Ices will be holding their breath because they know what's coming. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Piping nozzle number one. We just love that. Okay, let's switch over. So piping nozzle number one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just pipe some little tiny ones further down. So we're going to just get some even tinier little dots. This will make it really super fine then. You'll see what I mean as it comes round because you are literally just pushing the icing out. Can you see it? So those are the two that we've done so far. So we're extending these down a tiny bit further by just using a smaller nozzle. So we've been using nozzle two, we're now using nozzle one. Which my Royal Ices, they just love it, you know. Whenever I mention nozzle one, they jump for joy. Or not. <laughs> okay. Am I making it? You realise every Tuesday if I come on here and do a different Christmas cake, you're going to be so torn by the end of Christmas that you may as well just do one for everybody you know, I think. I'm just going to put one dot on there because it's wet down the bottom already. So you don't have to do four, you can do one, you can do none, just depends where you've ended up, where you've landed. I say this is also inspired from a, a tree decoration I saw and I thought, oh yeah, that would make a really good cake. Number one. <laughs> you see, now, my naughty Royal Ices that are on here, you see the minute I mention nozzle one, they go into meltdown. You see, they all love it, really. It's a really lovely nozzle. <laughs> That's because they've had bad experience. They haven't had a bad experience. It's just a, a, a bit of a, um, well, it's just, it's just something to learn, isn't it? But I think that extra bit there just sort of makes it a little bit more finer. So we may not like nozzle number one, but it's doing a good job of this. So we're going to go through the pain barrier here. And because the royal icing is already really soft, it's going to come through really nicely. There we 
here. Right, we've made it round there, okay. All good. Right, let's move that out of the way. Right, we're gonna do something with that board. Okay, let's move this, let's move all of this out of the way. I was gonna do some um, little flowery bits around the bottom here with some icing and some marshmallows. I don't know what it's gonna look like now. We'll give it a go. If I don't like it, I'll be taking them off. <laughs> if anybody wants to make very quick flowers, there's a nice little way you can do that. So, I'm gonna go under this camera here. I'm gonna switch cameras for a second. If anyone wants to make little flowers, I don't know if anybody's ever done this, um, you can do it with marshmallows. I've got to think about this because every time I start doing this every year, I forget. You have to cut them on the diagonal like so. Okay, so take these. Am I on camera? Yes, I am. Just cut them like that. Let's cut a few. So they have to be on the diagonal. Right, let's just do one to start with and see how we get on. What I need to do though is because I seem to have got some extra dust on here. I'm just going to have to remove this because otherwise it's going to go everywhere. There we go. There seemed to be a little pool a bit there. Um, if you wanted to just do a little flower. Oh, I've got to change nozzles again. Hold on. Change back to nozzle two. <laughs> Yeah, I oh know. Honestly, the fuss they make over this course, it's just unbelievable. The fuss they make over this <laughs> pipe and nozzle one. <laughs> so what I was going to do is just put a little bit of icing down there. I'm going to put some snow around all of this in a minute. And I was just going to take hold of these. I don't know what they're going to look like. They may look lovely. They may look horrible. We'll see how we go. Uh, got that too close to that cake. Let's pull it back a little bit. Let me pull this back. There we go, that's better. It's just too close to the cake. There we go. That's better. A little flower. And then you could pop a little blob in there and then the, the lovely silver balls will have to go in there, clearly. Like that, how about that? A little flower. Can you see that just about on there? Okay, mm, yes, and then well, I'm just going to do a couple of these, I'm not going to do very many, just so it breaks the board up a little bit. So I'm just cutting these on the diagonal, like so. Let's go back to the other camera. If I turn that round, you might be able to see it. There you go. There it is. I'm going to do one there and I'm going to do one there. Because I don't want to overpower this cake, I want to keep it as is but I quite like the idea of these so we'll pop that in so they're just marshmallows mini marshmallows cut on the angle turn them into flowers I'll just pop them in like that see I think that looks oh I've gone a bit far with that one that's okay and then we'll just drop that in the middle like that okay they're nice and easy to do let's have a little look Hmm, I'm happy with those. I'm not going to put on more than that. Now, where's my icing? So, royal icing again. So, on comes the snow now. So, we're out into our snow scene moment. Let's start at the back. So, we, we've got a nice gap all the way around here. So, we need to do something about this gap. So, we're going to put snow on here, obviously. So, we're just going to put on a little bit. I don't want to actually sort of completely drown it in snow now you need to be careful when you're doing this because you will end up lifting the dusting color if you're not careful so you've just got to go in very carefully I would prefer a different palette knife but this one will have to do so very carefully no I'm gonna to have to get the other palette knife I can't do it let me find the other one one's 
little bit better. It's smaller, only a little bit. That's better. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just pop that in there. That just covers our gap, you see, and this creates our winter wonderland snow. Let's push that in there. Sure, I probably should have done this before I put the flower on, but it doesn't matter. And then this is why the um, deers were up a little bit higher, because then you're going to put the snow underneath their feet. And if they're down too far, you actually end up burying their feet, while she's no good. So just kind of push it in. Yeah, I piped and pushed it on with a paintbrush last time. This time I'm making it much harder for myself and using a palette knife. <laughs> I should have done that really. Why was I thinking? Where's my paintbrush? I'm going to go back to the way Tanya's just reminded me I did it last week. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Much easier. Actually, it looks better like that. So let's do what I always do, which I've completely forgotten about. I've gone live and forgotten. That's better. Right, let's pipe it on. Let's get a bigger nozzle. Let's get... Let's get the infamous Wilton 18 out. Always fun. Right, let's get that on. I'll put a bit more icing in my bag so I'm running out. Uh, we're getting quite close to finishing. Obviously we need to put some ribbon on it. Let's hope Marion's impressed from Patchwork. I'm going to have to ask her. Right, let's do it this way. And then take your paintbrush and pull it down that way. Much easier than the silly palette knife method, which is what I was doing earlier, because clearly I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Luckily, everyone else is and I'm not. There we go. That's better. So remember what I said about the deer, you've got to have them set a little bit higher up. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. There we go. Don't really want... Oh, I'm going to have to have a bit of extra icing there because I've blobbed it. That's okay. There we go. All right. Let's have a look. I want to do anything else I think that's enough actually isn't it sometimes you just got to stop I know Kelly will be oh we need to put some finishing sparkle on it let's get some of that on right finishing sparkle glitter lovely finishing sparkle there we go let us put some of this on get some in the flowers there da, da, da don't really want it on the deer so we'll stick to having it on the board I mean you could go round and you could individually sort of puff each one of these snowflakes but I'm not going to do that because that would take forever uh, but if you wanted to you could um right what do I do with the Pritt stick which I deliberately found earlier before what came live because I thought there it is because I bought two new ones and then left them at home so I had to go rummaging for another one tonight and I managed to find one let's go all the way around Let's get that ribbon on, very important. Are you loving this idea? It's different, isn't it? I'm trying to bring you Christmas in a different way. I think it's too easy just to think of Christmas and just do holly and whatever. Let's try and think of it slightly differently. Get that bit stuck down there. There we go. 
Right, let's cut it. There we go. Bit of glue at the back. There we go, and we are done. Let's bring that forward so you can see it. How about that? There you go, winter wonderland cake. Let's go all the way around so you can see it. Here's the little deer sat there. Quite like that idea. Everything's white, white and silver. Cake is done in um, Wonder Dust Violet Mist. The cutter is Stag and Snowflake, which is patchwork cutters. Um, I've also used Pearl Snow to do the snowflakes and silver balls. We love the silver balls. Piping nozzles one and two for PME and also royal icing as well to do that. A few little flowers down there that just belong to the marshmallows. So that's quite fun as well. And then that was the sweet stamp, let it snow on there as well. There you go. Right, let me pick this thing up. Oh, I love this bit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I love this bit. Right, okay. Luckily, I don't think there's anything that's going to fall off. Having said that, you never know. Let's turn it around. Look at that shine on there. See, I've got a big light in front of me here now. You can see it big time now. Right, let's turn that around. There it is. Let it snow. Right, there you go. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining me. It's another Tuesday evening under our belt before Christmas. There's lots to look at between now and Christmas. It's all sort of rolling quite quickly now, isn't it? Um, if you want to find out any further information about me or about cake classes and all those sorts of things, go to my website, which is tracescakes.co.uk. Let's turn that round, little deer, and then big deal. Now, always when we take photos of these, they absolutely gleam. I can see it looks amazing. It is picking up on the camera, which is really good. Um, but there you go. So that's tonight's cake. It is a winter wonderland. I'm going to put it down. I will put a picture of it up on the cake community page so you'll be able to see it later on. It will be available on my YouTube channel, which will be, there we go. There's my YouTube channel. It'll be available on the YouTube channel tomorrow. You will be able to go back and watch it on Sugar and Crumbs if you're doing anything else or if you've joined me at a later date. So I will be back on Saturday on my own channel and then I'll be back on here Tuesday at half past six for more Christmas. <laughs> it's just like a roll of Christmas now. I've got to the end of Halloween. I thought I don't want to ever see Halloween ever again. And I'm sure I may feel like that by the time we get to Christmas. But for the moment, we'll keep going. This is Christmas week part two. Uh, we've done oh, last week's one. Let me just show you that for those of you that missed it. There we go. That was last week's one. So that was done with the frozen blue. So you've seen the colour difference tonight versus the one that we've done this evening. But again, I'll take a picture of that and you'll be able to see it. So have a lovely evening, everyone. Take care and I will see you on Sugar and Crumbs on Tuesday, 6.30 next week. See you soon. Bye.